If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. In this question, we are given an equation that gives us the pressure variation of a traveling sound wave. And we've learned in this chapter that the general form of the pressure variation of a sound wave is governed by this equation here. And to solve part A, what we're simply going to do is align the given equation with the general equation. But before we do that, we must notice that we need to rewrite the given equation in a more standardized form. So they have factored out a pi in the question. What we need to do is actually distribute that pi into the brackets in order to rewrite the given equation in the more general form that we are learning about in the text. So let's go ahead and distribute the pi. Now that we've done that, we can begin to answer part A. It's asking us for the pressure amplitude. Well, the pressure amplitude of this pressure wave is symbolized by delta P sub M. So that's basically the coefficient of the sine function. And if we look at the coefficient of our sine function, we can see that the value for delta P sub M is equal to 1.50 pascals. That is the correct answer for part A. That is indeed the pressure amplitude. The next thing we need to figure out is the frequency of this wave. And if we inspect the general equation, we do not see the frequency. The frequency, of course, is symbolized by F. The closest that we have is the angular frequency, which is the coefficient of time. Now, our angular frequency, our coefficient of time, is this value right here. So we do know that omega is 315 pi inverse seconds. So that's going to be helpful because the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi multiplied by frequency. So if we divide both sides equation by 2 pi, then we can solve for the frequency. Let's go ahead and plug in the value of omega, which again is the 315 pi inverse seconds. And when we simplify that, the pi's can cancel and we divide and we get approximately 158 inverse seconds. You can also write inverse seconds as hertz. That is the frequency of this pressure wave. That's the answer to part B. We go to part C, and in part C, we are looking for the wavelength, which is symbolized by the Greek letter lambda. We do not have lambda in our general pressure equation, but we do have K, which is the angular wave number. It's also my wife's favorite text message. So what we can do is we can go back to an earlier chapter and see the relationship between K and lambda. Here is that relationship. You probably learned about that in the former chapter, the previous chapter. So we can solve this for lambda by basically swapping the K and the lambda. And then we just go back up to our equation and we gather our value for k. k is the coefficient of x. We can see that the coefficient of x in our particular equation here is 0.9 pi inverse meters. So we're going to plug that in for k. And when we simplify that, the pi's will cancel. You'll end up doing 2 divided by 0.9 and you would get about 2.22. And the unit is just meters because if we multiply the bottom by meters to the one and the top by meters to the one, then these become meters to the zero when you add the exponents, but meters to the zero is just a one, so they cancel. You're left with just meters as your unit of wavelength. So that's the correct answer to part C. In part D, we are asked to find the speed of the wave. That does not directly show up in the equation, but there is a lovely formula from the previous chapter that gives us the speed of the wave. And there is the speed of the wave. It equals the angular frequency divided by k. If we go back up to the information we've discussed, we do have the angular frequency. It's that green value right there. And we do have the value of k, which is that blue number right there. Let's go ahead and plug those into our speed equation. And when we simplify that, we can cancel the pi's again. We divide 315 by 0.9. We get 350, the unit of speed, of course, is meters per second. We can show why real quickly here. Multiply the top and the bottom by meters, so these cancel. Multiply the top and the bottom by seconds, so the inverse seconds cancel, and you would be left with meters per second. That is the correct answer to part D.